the end of the day, if we're, if we're hurting our mitochondria, it's a recipe for disaster. So we can help them with different things. Yeah. We can regenerate them. We can make more. Like, tell me about that part and how your yeah. A plays in there, because I know that there's differences there. You're, you're absolutely right. There are differences. And we can think of the mitochondria in three stages, three parts of their life cycle. The first is the creation of new mitochondria, and that's called mitochondrial biogenesis. So that's when we're actually making new mitochondria. The second is mitochondria efficiency. So once we have a mitochondria, how well are these mitochondria working? Can we make them more efficient or not? And at the end of a mitochondria's life is a process called mitophagy, which is that cellular breakdown of a mitochondria into its key components that can then be recycled into new mitochondria. Now, urolithin A uh, does play a role in that, and people have probably heard of other mitochondrial supplements, things like NAD, CoQ10, and, and things that are targeting the mitochondria. And really, they each look at a different process. And what's unique about urolithin A is that it hits that mitophagy. That it's the only clinically validated supplement that actually targets the breakdown of dysfunctional mitochondria. It's kind of like the, the garbage person in our cells, right? If we leave our house, you know, and we never take our, our garbage, there's going to be this accumulation of debris that causes issues, even if that's just an angry, you know, spouse or family. So what, mito, what my, uh, Mitopir does, urolithin A, is that it recycles these mitochondria, and that feeds into mechanisms that then create new ones. Other things like NAD, that's mitochondrial biogenesis, or CoQ10, that's mitochondrial efficiency. And the quality of clinical data for each is different, but mitopure and urolithin A is really unique in targeting that mitophagy component. Yes. Okay. And then there's a there's a playback on our muscles. Talk to me about that, because I that's the part that ha- resonated with me early on was there was some data around muscle health and urolithin A. Yeah, certainly. And uh, I'd love to hear your experience too. I know. So we are Timeline, the company that uh, uh, produces urolithin A, it's the, um, obviously who I work for uh, managing clinical trials. Um, but what Timeline uh, did originally was look at ways we can increase health span. So how c- can we increase the number of years people are spending in good health? And muscle central to that, you know, uh, I think it's rightfully considered the longevity organ um, in many spaces. We, we all can see in people we know, as we get older, we lose strength, we lose muscle mass. And so muscle was a primary focus in some of the early clinical studies that Timeline was doing. And what we saw in some of those studies after showing the safety and bioavailability of urolithin A was that when we took a wide range of populations, whether it be middle-aged men and women, primarily women in these studies actually, which is quite common in this space, but you know, 40 all the way up to 90 years old, with two to four months of supplementation, we were seeing significant improvements in muscle strength. So whether people were taking half a gram or one gram, we saw about 10 to 12 percent increases in muscle strength after these couple months of taking urolithin A. And that obviously was really exciting to see positive clinical results um, that has continued to uh, translate and be replicated by other researchers around the world from elite athletes who just had a study accepted uh, that was in elite uh, runners, uh, going Australian Olympic team, going into the last Olympic cycle, weightlifters, all the way up to, uh, to frail adults. So muscle really was the core of what we're doing because of its role in longevity. And strength uh, was one of the first places we saw um, benefits of mitopure urolithin A. Well, it makes sense because with with adding muscle to our body, we are adding mitochondria to our body, right? Do I have that right? Yeah, I would. And, you know, I would actually think about it uh, almost the other way in this case of what the mechanism might be where yeah, muscle... I, yeah, I, muscles are very energetically demanding tissue. It costs yeah. a lot of energy to build muscle. Exactly. So if we can improve that energy source in our cells and remove any of that dysfunctional mitochondria, which do have major negative impacts on our muscle, then we have the energy needed to build uh, to build strength. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I was, that's how I think of it. It's like 
adding muscle to your body is one of the few ways that you can add mitochondria to the scene, right? And then, but if you've got compromised mitochondria going on in there and they are caught, there's, they're, they're, if they become senescent cells, if, or if they, you know, they're, they're part of that kind of pathway of the zombie cell, you know, sucking up resources, not pulling their weight kind of thing to have a product on board that helps with that mitophagy and that sort of junk and debris cleanup makes so much sense. Cause it's like, if we're bringing in new good stuff, we can't be, you know, I'm cleaning out my house right now because I'm moving and I am like, I have, okay. so much, I have so much crap in here. I don't, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to bring this crap to my new house, you know? <laughs> so. That's right. If we're, if we're improving the house that is our body. We need to get rid of the garbage. Yeah, uh, yeah. So having a system on that side, I've always been hyper-focused on this side, but it wasn't until you guys came on my radar that I, and I legitimately use this stuff every day. Like this is one of the few things I le- just religiously take because I, it had never occurred to me that like, oh, maybe the mitophagy part is critical yeah well well, you're absolutely right i know we were chatting about it off air but supplements when it comes to what's worth it it's a short list and when you talk to people who have seen the trends come and go you see the fads you ask them what they're taking it's usually a pretty select list and uh, i think it it's telltale sign when something can span years and years and only have more built up evidence behind it you know you see things like creatine you know no one doubts creatine's efficacious you know some things doesn't stick around for decades if it's not and it's exciting to see that now with almost 20 years of clinical research that happening with mitopure yeah yeah well it's exciting to see creatine get big too because absolutely i was giving it to my little old ladies a decade ago for their brain health and now everyone's like you can use creatine for your brain yeah Get out of here. (laughs) It it is. Even just recently, I know, um, well, you uh, rightfully called out my Canadian accent, but uh, (laughs) shout out uh, Darren Kandow. Yeah. He's a fantastic researcher in this space. uh, And has a couple of really nice papers this year. Um, And and it is, I think it is, uh, there's enough smoke that there's probably a fire. And I am excited to see where the clinical data lead on that front because it makes sense that, you know, creatine at, at its heart, it's improving cellular energetics. So it, it would make sense that it's going to have positive impacts in several tissues. But that brings in this piece again, because if we're, I always think of things in terms of pathways. If I'm revving pathways, if I'm asking the body to rev a pathway, I have to provide necessary cofactors. I have to provide the environment for it to thrive. You can't just right. ask a system to go and hit the gas and not have something on the other side to mitigate it. So this idea of mitophagy, of, of you know, mitochondrial cleanup, no. that part made a lot of sense to me because I, usually we're, we're throwing the inputs in, you know, we're asking systems to go harder instead of like, what about the tail end of things? <laughs> yeah. we, and, and how do we recycle what we have? Exactly. It's a cycle. Exactly that life cycle of a mitochondria, you might say, but our body really is just in a constant state of turnover. It's renewal. You know, if we nick our finger while we're cutting our nails, you know, that, that skin, because it's turning over, can heal. It's the same with everything in our body, whether it be muscle, blood cells. And, and that's really what my mitopure urolithin A permits is that turnover of mitochondria to keep a healthier pool of mitochondria throughout our body. 